Hi, my name is Ray Kelly with Miniman Empire Automation Systems. Today, we're going to talk about the Shunk EGU. We have the Ethernet IP version here connected to our PLC, and we wanted to talk about how to get those two communicating. If you do have a Shunk EGU product or are interested in one, if you go to the website of Shunk, you'll find that there is a downloads page for the EGU. And if you open up the instructions, you'll see there a list of commissioning instructions for various protocols. So EtherCAT, Profinet, Ethernet IP, Modbus. You will also find software plugins for various robots. So whether it's a UR, Yaskawa, ABB, um, Beckoff, et cetera, you can download these plugin packages, which can greatly expedite your integration process. But we wanted to go in and make sure everyone knew how to do this longhand. One of the first steps you're gonna do is open up the Shunk Control Center. And what you would like to do is connect the ethernet cable from your gripper to your computer. Make sure that the power cable is plugged in and on, and you'll be able to scan the network for your ethernet device. In my case, I have the EGU50 and press connect. One of the first things that's critical for our integration is the configuration of the network. So if you go to the configuration tab and then network settings, you can change the IP address and subnet mask to match your needs. Over here on the left, you also see information about the status information and control information of the IO for Ethernet IP in this case. You also have the ability to do some debugging here. So without the robot or the PLC involved, you can actually control the position and move this around. Once you have your IP address set, you're going to power cycle your gripper to apply those changes. And I'm going to go into the CodeSys programming platform to show how you would do this from scratch. So now that the Shunk EGU program has been created, I'm going to right click, I'm going to add a device. In my case, it's this EX700. And I'm going to add some other Ethernet protocols here. So I'm going to add the Ethernet card. Excuse that. I'm going to add the scanner. And then I would add the Shunk Gripper device. If your repository does not have this in there, you're able to import that under tools, the device repository, and then do install, and then locate the EDS file. The EDS files are also available on the Shunk website under the software package. So software at the very bottom are these software packages for all the different protocols. So your EDS files, your GSD files, your IODD file link, uh, that can all be downloaded here. Once you have those downloaded, you can go to that directory, extract it, and then find the specific EDS file. So you'll see here that there are several EDS files. If you open up the readme file, it will explain the various codings here. So depending on which Shunk EGU model you're using, that will change which EDS file you're going to need to use. In our case, we need this file. So I've moved that file to my desktop, making it easier to find. Open that up and it's going to add that to my repository. And now I can add that device here. A couple other configuration needs would be to set my IP address of my PLC in this case. And then go down to my ethernet card and tell it to use the bridge device, which is allowing me to be connected to the Shunk Gripper and my PLC at the same time. And on the general, here's where we're gonna type in the IP address of our Gripper, which would be 60.11, as I demonstrated earlier. Uh, I typically turn off these match checks, but um, those may be critical for your application if you're looking to keep track of which product is being installed the machine, it can actually throw an alarm in case someone installs the wrong unit or with the wrong firmware. 
Here you'll see the output words and the input words with the control double word and the positioning parameters, etc. And if I go down to my IO mapping, I'm able to actually start mapping my tags to my respective bits. Uh, some of these are going to be dints for the larger values such as positioning and velocity. So please make sure you have the appropriate size tag for that location. I'm going to jump ahead to a different project that is already completed. Here you'll see I have my project with my tags. So I've created a list of variables that are the various inputs and outputs. I've even created some HMI uh, IO so I can control this from the screen and tied them to the jog negative positive acknowledge for resetting errors. In my shunk IO map here, you'll see the various mappings for the various status and control words. At the bottom, you also see the gripper out position, velocity and force. If I go over to my HMI program and I log into my HMI, you can see I'm getting the current position of the gripper and I can do the reset here and I can even jog negative or jog positive depending on needs. You can expand the HMI for your various PLCs to do more functionality. Just wanted to give you a basic sense of the integration. Coming over here to my symbol configuration, if you are using the XOR specifically, you'll need to add this file so that you can export your tags into JMobile. And in JMobile, you can go in here to import those tags. And it'll appear here. Once you go to your page, you can then add various buttons, status, symbols, and control signals, and then tie them to the tags in your PLC, making a very easy, quick integration package. Another note here in the manual, if you go to the Ethernet IP manual, you'll see that all the IO is laid out here for outputs and inputs. So we want to map your own. And on this side here, toward the bottom of the manual, you'll find examples regarding relative movements and absolute movements. So you can type in 80,000 for position, 60,000 for velocity, and then flag that 13th bit to cause it to open and close. Thank you for your time today with the video. If you have any questions regarding Shunk or other automation products, please reach out to Miniman Empire Automation Systems.